Good morning. Good morning to all of you joining us via Facebook Live. Good morning to those of you who are sharing with us here in the parking lot this morning. Truly, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So on this morning, as I step away from the outside speaker, we uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, as we're all aware, so we would just like to honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our nation, gave their lives in service to the military. And we know that not only those who served, but also the families of those who served are also be being impacted by the service of their loved ones. So we just want to take time to remember on this weekend those who gave their lives in service for the Lord. But also, as we reflect on those who have given service to our nation and the military, I'm also reminded of the fact that we are soldiers. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. So on today, Will you join me in celebrating not only those who served our nation, but those who serve as soldiers in the army of the Lord? We do not own the right to hear the music that we will be using on today, but on this morning I want us to open up with the help of Norman Hutchins with the song Battlefield. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. Amen.
Amen. We are soldiers on the battlefield fighting for I want to thank Brother Kevin Dorn for keeping up with me as I move around this morning, trying to find the right spot. <laughs> Amen. So this morning for our scripture reading, I invite your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy, the second chapter. And we'll begin our reading at the first verse. And we find these words written as Paul penned this letter to his son in the ministry, Timothy. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Therefore, Thou endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you again for another day. We thank you, Lord, for all the many wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross and rose on the third day, is seated on your right hand and is waiting to come back for us, to receive us unto himself. Heavenly Father, any sins that we are guilty of, whether it be by things we've done or things that we fail to do. We come to you right now asking for your forgiveness. As we repent, confess, you will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for the Good Hope Baptist Church family and every church that is open in your name. Even if the building may not be open, the church is still open because your church is made up of your people. And the church comes into the building. So whichever way, Father, just continue to watch over the men and women of God that are bringing your word, those who are singing praises to your holy name. Father, just continue to watch over your people. And Father, continue to equip us to add souls to your church, that we will be able to go into all the world and preach your gospel to every creature. Father, we pray for our nation right now. We pray for our president, for governors, for mayors, for all those elected officials, Father God, that you will equip them with the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that they need in order to govern in a way that is pleasing in your sight. And Father, now as we continue to navigate through this pandemic, we pray that you will comfort those families who have lost loved ones as a result, that you will touch those who are in hospitals or those who are recovering at home. Father, that you will remind us that you are greater than anything that may come our way. So we know that you are greater than this pandemic. You are greater than any weapon that will be formed against us because no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Now, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you will touch all those who need a touch from you. Whatever their special need might be, Father, you made them and you know all about them. So touch, heal, deliver as only you can. And Heavenly Father, bless this worship on this morning, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts may be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So now as again we remember those who gave their lives in service to our country. I want us to be reminded of the one who gave his life for us. He thought we all were worth saving. So he gave the ultimate sacrifice as well. He sacrificed his life. So now we'll hear from Anthony Bell that he thought I was worth saving. And he was willing to give his life. He was willing to die that 
I might be able to live. Sometimes you might not feel like you're worth it, but if you just think about what Jesus has done for you, then you'll realize that you are worth it. Thank you again to our videographer, Brother Kevin Gore Jr., and our sound technician, Sister Mathis, working behind the scenes. And there is one other person who I want to acknowledge today, someone whose work during this pandemic, for the most part, has gone unnoticed. But even though we haven't been in the sanctuary and in the fellowship hall, the fellowship hall and the sanctuary has still been decorated according to the season that we're in. So today I just want to give a shout out to Sister Dixie Miles for continuing to take care of our sanctuary even though we're not physically in the sanctuary right now. And thank all of you for your encouraging texts, calls, your prayers, everything that you're doing because even though I stand here in front of the camera, I realize that I'm not doing this by myself. As a matter of fact, without everybody working together and loving and sticking together as a church family, this would not be possible. So again, in keeping with Memorial Day, we recognize those who gave their lives in service to our country. The song we just heard recognizing people who gave their lives or the one who gave his life for us. Today we're going to look at Stephen, one who gave his life for his faith. So I invite your attention to the seventh chapter of the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter number seven. And we will begin our reading at verse number 54. Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse number 54. And we find these words recorded by Luke, the physician, in his letter to Theophilus. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gasped on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Verse 57, Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Verse 59, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Today I want to speak from the subject of faith worth dying for. A faith worth dying for. We're introduced to Stephen in the sixth chapter of Acts where there was a dispute that arose in the church between the Hellenistic Jewish widows and the Hebraic Jewish widows over the daily administration. The Hellenistic or the Greek widows were being left out. So the apostles called the people together and said, Choose seven men of good report and full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom. Stephen was one of these men who was chosen. But Stephen did not just limit himself to the daily ministration or taking care of the physical needs of the widow. 
but he also preached the word with power and with authority and with the Holy Ghost. And when Stephen preached, there were miracles and signs and wonders that followed him as he preached. Now, wait a, wait a minute. Hold on. You just said that Stephen was one of the seven who were chosen to do the service. We typically equate this to the calling of the first deacon. But yet you just said that Stephen was preaching with power and with authority. Ah, I'm talking to my deacons right now. I know that I have some deacons who have some power and authority. So that means that the pastor don't have to be the only one who can share the word. So Stephen's preaching with power and authority got on the nerves of the religious people. <clears throat> as Christians, we have to be careful because when we do what we're supposed to do as Christians and God begins to elevate us, the religious folk are going to get upset. So as a result of Stephen and his persuasive preaching, they tried to get Stephen in a trap, but the Bible declares that because of Stephen's wisdom, they weren't even able to argue with him. They weren't even able to dispute it. That's why we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, so that when folk come against us, we're able to stand, and when we stand, they will not be able to resist the power, the authority, and the wisdom with which we speak. So Stephen made some enemies <clears throat> at the church house. So the first thing we see in the text that we're reading was there was a problem. In verse number 54, there was a problem. When they heard the things that Stephen said. Now what did Stephen say? The truth. He started preaching from Abraham. And then he went on and talked about Joseph. And then he went on and talked about David. And he went on and talked about Solomon. And then he went on and talked about Jesus. But the thing that all of these people who Stephen referred to, Abraham, went to a country that he did not know about. He went in faith. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. Moses was rejected because when he went up on the mountain, they thought he was on the mountain too long, so they decided that they needed to make some false gods because they rejected Moses. But God reminded Moses, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. So my brothers and sisters, when you find yourself standing on your faith and you're rejected, don't feel bad because you're in good company. And then he told them about the ultimate rejection how they have rejected the chosen one of God, Jesus Christ. And when they heard these things in verse 54, they had a problem. They became angry with Stephen for doing nothing more than telling the truth. But after we see the problem, the next thing we see is the power. Just because folk come against you, that doesn't mean that you don't have any power. If you have the Holy Ghost, then you have the power to overcome any enemy that may come against you. So that's what we see in verse 55. But he was full of the Holy Ghost and he looked up steadfastly into heaven and look at what he saw. He saw the glory of God and Jesus Standing, check this out, Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. Now most of the scriptures that we see, we hear about Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father. But in Stephen's case, we see Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. So the power of the Holy Ghost was still upon him. And even in his dying hour, he still had power. He saw the glory of God. He saw the heavens open, the Son of Man standing 
on the right hand of God. But Stephen had a faith that he felt was worth dying for. So after we see the problem, after we see the power, the next thing we see in this text is the persecution. And then they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped up their ears because they didn't want to hear anything more that Stephen had to say. And they ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and laid their clothes down at the feet of a young man named Saul. Look at these people. They wanted to get comfortable. They didn't want to have anything encumbering them when they got ready to persecute Stephen. So they took their outer garments off and laid them down at the feet of Saul so that they would be free to pick up the stones and stone the Stephen. There are some folk who are trying to get comfortable against you right now. They're taking off their outer garments right now because they think they're about to get you, but you can declare that I have a faith. Even if they kill my body, they can't kill my soul. They can't kill my spirit. So I'm going to go ahead. How many of you are going to go ahead and give them the praise anyhow? So they took Stephen outside of the city and they stoned him. The problem, they didn't like what Stephen had to say even though it was the truth. The power. Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. The persecution, in spite of the fact that he was standing for the truth, they still stoned him to death. And the last thing we see in this text is his prayer. Even though he was being persecuted, even though he had been lied on, because let me back up for a moment. The only reason that Stephen even ended up on trial was because they found two people to lie on to bring him before the Sanhedrin. So the false witnesses came in and called Stephen to be on trial. But look at what Stephen does in his prayer. He says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord Lay not this sin to their charge. So in everything that he was going through, Stephen did not pray for himself. He didn't pray, Lord, take this persecution away from me. He didn't pray, Lord, ease my pain from these stones. But his prayer was, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he prayed for the ones who were persecuting them. How many of us are strong enough in our faith to pray for the ones who are persecuting us? Not the ones we think are persecuting us, but the ones who we know. They're not just talking about us behind our back. They're talking about us through our faith. How many of us have a strong enough faith to pray for them. And as we look at Stephen's prayer, it brings to mind another prayer. When he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Doesn't it remind you of Calvary? When Jesus was hanging there on the cross, he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And as Jesus was hanging on the cross and he looked over the crowd of those who were responsible for crucifying him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. So Stephen is patterning his prayer in his dying hour after Jesus' prayer in his dying hour. So we too, if we have a faith worth dying for, then we don't have to fear death because we know that Jesus has already died on Calvary. Jesus has already risen from the grave. He's waiting to receive us. 
So when we find ourselves being challenged, being challenged because of our faith, how many of us have a faith worth dying for? Some people think that the church is being persecuted now because we are limited in our openness. At one time, we weren't even supposed to be gathering together. Now those restrictions have been relaxed somewhat. But yet there are those people who look at the government closing the church because of a pandemic. Now, this is not a political speech. I'm not trying to support either side. But I'm just saying what I'm saying. That the church is being persecuted because of the rules that the government has set. Well, if you think not coming to the building is persecution, look at what Stephen went through. If you think not coming to the building is persecution, look at what Stephen went through. And if you think you're being persecuted now, don't hang around here until after the rapture comes. Then you're really going to see. But even with what we're going through now, how many of us, like Stephen, have a faith that we believe is worth dying for? How many of us look to Jesus as our example? Jesus, the author and the finisher of that faith, who went through before we went through. He had us on his mind before we were even here. So as we remember, again, those who gave their lives in service to the country, as we remember Stephen and other martyrs who gave their lives for their faith, not only in the Bible days, but even in modern times, there are people who are dying for their faith. Let us look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we will realize that we too have a faith that is worth dying for. Can we just praise God for a faith? That's worth dying for. But again, remember, if you die in faith, you're not dying. Because let's look at the end of verse 60. When Jesus stood on the right hand of the Father to receive Stephen, and Stephen prayed his last prayer, the Word says that when he had said this, he fell asleep. As believers in Jesus Christ, we're not going to die. We're just going to fall asleep and wait for him to come back and receive us again unto himself. That where he is, there we may be also. Praise God for a faith that's worth dying for. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Stephen and his example. We thank you for all of those pioneers of the faith who knew that absent from the body means to be present with you. So Father, increase our faith that we may be able to stand in difficult times. Increase our faith that we will not be worried, we will not be afraid, but we will trust in you. Father, we thank you for those soldiers, the brave men and women who gave their lives in service of their nation. We pray right now, Father, for the families who are dealing with the loss of a military loved one. Father, we ask that you will just continue to keep them in your care. And Lord, 
We pray for those who are on the front lines right now of this pandemic, the healthcare workers, the first responders, the grocery store clerks, and all of those who are still serving at this time, that you will keep your hand of protection on them. And Father, if there is anyone who has not yet received you through your son Jesus and the part of their sin, we release your spirit of adoption right now that they may come into this wonderful faith that we know, that faith that's worth dying for. And Father, we acknowledge that all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise belong to you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice who has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I invite you to receive him right now. Just admit to him that you have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And Romans 10 and 9 says that you shall be saved. You don't have to be in a church building. You can be in your car. You can be in your home, wherever you are. Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And if you open the door, he will come into you and suck with you and you with him. So I encourage you all today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you may have a faith that's worth dying for. May the Lord bless and keep you is our prayer. And now, may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be the glory, now, henceforth, and forevermore. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And our final song for the day, again, we're going to hear from Anthony Brown in Group Therapy. And the name of the song is, I Trust You. How many of you trust the Lord right now, even in the midst of this pandemic, you still trust Him? And you realize that you were not created to worry. You were not created to fear. But you were created to worship Him daily. 